We've gotten a lot of questions about how to find dispersed camping spots. We love to boondock, and now that we're back in the Southwest, we're gonna start doing a lot more of it. So we wanna show you how to find dispersed camping spots, what to do when you camp here, and some of the upsides and downsides of camping out in the middle of nowhere. The best way to find dispersed camping is stopping at the National Forest Office or a ranger office in the area that you're looking to camp. And the thing you wanna ask for is information on dispersed camping. So I just went into the office and I have a whole sheet on dispersed camping in the Coconino Forest. It has rules on campfire, human waste, pet waste, how far you should park off the road. But the best thing to have is the motor vehicle use map. And this map has a legend that will tell you exactly where you're allowed to disperse camp. So if you're new to disperse camping, my recommendation is to go in, talk to a ranger or someone who works for the public land that you're looking to camp on. But other resources we like to use is All Stays Camp and RV app on our phone, a few websites such as freecampsites.net and Campendium. Whenever we're looking for a dispersed camping site, the first thing we do is detach the Jeep and scout the area. This happens to be one of the best roads we've seen to disperse camping. A lot of times you'll find a road that's rutted out. Um, there are rocks and other things that you would never want to take your RV or trailer down. But if you have something like a Jeep and you're tent camping, it's perfect. So we're trying to avoid roads like this. There is no way we would get a Class A RV down this without being in a lot of trouble, scraping trees and various other things. So again, we're looking for a much better groomed road. Depending on what you have and how you're gonna get down here, this may work for you. Also consider things like weather. Um, you may be fine to get down this road, but are you gonna be able to get out after it's rainy? And this is potentially muddy and full of water. Now this is the entrance to our site. We picked it because the road isn't rutted out at all. It's fairly smooth and there is a nice flat spot at the top of this road for us to park. This isn't an access road for anything else. So a lot of times off the main road, you'll have an access road that a lot of locals will use. We try to avoid those so we don't have people driving by the RV all day long. Depending on where you're camping, sometimes you'll find a sign like this that says this is a camping spot and the number of days you're allowed to stay here. Now some of the pros and cons of boondocking. Pros, I mean, you can't complain about this as your backyard. You also typically don't have neighbors right on top of you, which also leads me to a con, which is if you have neighbors, for example, that are blasting their music at all hours of the day, uh, there's no one to call because there are no quiet hours. You can, however, move to another spot. We recently had a neighbor that had two people come down the little access road he was right off of. They were playing music and they seemed like they were gonna be partying this weekend. So we saw him pick up and move to another spot. The best part about boondocking is the absolute freedom and some of the best views around. Now, a lot of people have asked us in the past about safety. We've always felt very safe when we leave for the day, we leave our RV. Sometimes we take some of our valuables with us, but we make sure to lock up. We put all the shades down so people can't look in the RV. But aside from that, we've never had any issues while boondocking. We also never see rangers. You are on your own. If something happens, you are gonna need to deal with it. So make sure that if you go boondocking, you know where the local hospital is, numbers for emergency services, and always check to see if you're getting cell coverage. If you don't get cell coverage, what is the closest place you can go to to make a phone call if you have an emergency? These are just some of the things to consider when boondocking. Some of the other ones are making sure you conserve electricity, water, your tank space. For us, one of the biggest things is always our black tank. That seems to fill up first, but for very outdoorsy people, Nature can become your bathroom. Just make sure you're digging a pit so you can leave your waste there and cover it up when you're gone. Take all the trash out with you. There are people out here that leave their trash. The site next to us actually has part of a couch lane next to the fire pit. We always try to clean up the site as much as possible so it's even in better shape for the people who come and use it after us. And thank you so much for watching.